landscape here in the Philippines has drastically changed in the last few years, and I'm glad to say that it has changed for the better. Not too long ago, someone buying a new car could count their options with their hands. But now we have so many manufacturers, and the best part is, you can get premium features at very affordable prices. And now we have another new player in the Philippine motoring arena. Introducing Chang'an and their subcompact crossover, the CS35+. Plus. a bit of background about the brand, Chang'an is based in China and they've been around for 158 years. So if experience is the best teacher, I think it's safe to say that they know a thing or two about how to manufacture things. Chang'an is actually considered to be one of the big four automakers in China in terms of volume production and the second most popular brand in terms of sales. But enough of that because I know you guys really came here to see this. The CS35 Plus definitely not the most creative name for a car. But that doesn't mean they didn't get creative anywhere else. Because as you'll see in this review, there are actually quite a few things that make this car unique. Let's start with the exterior. The CS35 Plus may have a boxy silhouette, but you'll see there's nothing conventional about its details. For starters, you have a grille with red inserts and color-coded touches on the body cladding. Let me know in the comments if this gets a yay or a nay, but personally, I don't mind the red touches as much as I do these fuzzy lines over here. Anyway, you also get halogen headlamps with DRLs that doubles as turn indicators. The lights also perform a welcome sequence when you unlock the doors, which is a pretty nice touch. You also get the silver accent which runs all the way across the headlights. Overall, the design is boxy and made up of straight lines. And it's the same case along the side. More lines and boxy shapes. Even the fuel lid is squarish. Maybe whoever designed this has a thing for squares or just really loves to use his ruler. As far as exterior kit is concerned, you get 18-inch wheels, four-wheel disc brakes, power folding heated side mirrors, roof rails, an integrated spoiler and LED tail lamps. Taillight bars are in. When you pop the trunk, you'll see that it's manually operated and that there's a decent amount of cargo space. You also get a tonneau cover. And if you need more space, you can remove that and fold the rear seats. You won't get a flat floor, though the load lift isn't that high. Now before we step in and check out the interior, I want to show you guys this car's neatest party trick. So I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the windows just went down. Sounds went up, and, and the lights even perform a dance function. Now try finding another car that has that feature. I think it's time to step in. This interior is definitely a sight to behold. It just feels so upscale, with all these different textures and great choice of materials. The only hard plastics you'll find here are on the lower part of the dash and lower part of the door cards but everything else is extremely soft, and the seats are no exception. This is really soft leather, and the seats do a superb job in making you feel comfortable. The seats are electronically adjusted to move it forwards and backwards, but everything else has to be adjusted manually, and that's the first I've seen in any car. You also get a tilt and telescopic steering wheel, so finding a good driving position is a breeze. When it comes to ergonomics, everything is laid out pretty well except for two things. One, the start button is behind the wiper stop, so it's a little hard to reach. Two, this is a touch panel for the infotainment system. And while you're operating the infotainment system, there's a tendency for you to rest your hands here, and you end up accidentally turning it off, which can get a little annoying. But I guess it just takes some getting used to. 
you'll also find that the only physical button here on the center is the button for the hazard lights. Everything else is touch sensitive. And the automatic climate controls try to emulate physical buttons with these virtual rollers, but it just isn't the same. But I really like how well integrated the infotainment system is. It just blends so nicely within the dash and it doesn't look like an afterthought. Now this doesn't have a 360 camera, but you do get a blind spot and rear camera with active guidelines. And considering how small this vehicle is, that's quite sufficient. The instrument cluster consists of analog gauges with a multi-info screen that displays fuel mileage, tire pressure, a digital readout of your speed, and a trip computer. When it comes to storage, you get pockets on both sides of the center console, and you can lift the center armrest to reveal more storage space. However, the weird thing here is the storage goes all the way underneath the cup holders. And I wish this could slide to make the space more accessible and usable, but I guess they kept it this way to keep it looking clean. Other notable features include side and curtain airbags aside from the dual airbags up front, automatic wipers and headlights, traction and hill descent control, and a huge panoramic sunroof. At the back, the seats are just as comfortable, and there's a surprising amount of room back there. In terms of amenities, you get reading lights, seat pockets, a USB port, and one air vent. And the trick here is to move this when the other occupant isn't looking. So this is extremely well equipped for its price point and segment, because not too long ago, something in this segment would have a single din stereo and manually adjusted side mirrors. Under the hood, you get a 1.4 liter GDI turbocharged engine that produces 156 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque, which are pretty good numbers considering the displacement and size of this vehicle. This also has a seven speed wet type dual clutch transmission. Now I'm sure you're curious to know how this thing drives, but we'll have to wait until a test drive unit becomes available because this is pretty new. The CS35 Plus retails for 1,068,000 pesos, but can be yours for 999,000 pesos for a limited time. It's really refreshing to see that a car with so many premium features and good performance numbers can be yours at such an attainable price point. And you can say what you want about this car, but there's no denying that cars like this are changing the automotive industry for the better. So this may be a new player, but like other Chinese brands you've seen on this channel, it serves as a wake-up call to other more established manufacturers to either step up their game or lower their prices.